Good morning. It's 7.30 here on News 6 Plus. Welcome to Breakfast with Bridget. I'm your host, Bridget Ellison, on this Tuesday, August 27th. And we're getting ready to get you out the door. Um, lots of updates overnight. We had the Polaris Dawn launch scrubbed, rescheduled for tomorrow. The Lake Mary All-Stars are back home. They're headed back to school today. And we have a live interview with Disney on Ice and one of its stars. That's coming up a little bit later. But first, let's get ready to get you out the door. And Chief Meteorologist Candace Campos is in the pinpoint weather center and you know we picked up a little bit of rain yesterday candace so is it sort of a mm -hmm. rinse and repeat today or what's new um a little drier rain chances for the past few days have been up to up to like 50 60 percent chance of rain we're going to start backing them off just a hair uh, down to about a 30 to 40 percent we are tapping into some more of that drier air um coming in from the north as a big ridge of high pressure kind of builds in so although we have a little more drier air kind of filtering in, it's not going to be a completely dry day, just a little bit of a less, less of a coverage of rain in the forecast. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's summer. It does take a lot to completely take out all the rain in the forecast. So let's take it to the maps, Bridget, show you what's going on across central Florida. Temperatures this morning are starting off into those upper 70s to low 80s, but we are going to continue to see. I just, hold on a second. Please wait. There it is. I said it and I clicked, forgot to click play. Uh, we're looking here at the radar. We are starting to pick up a little bit of rain right now. It's developing off the coast. We'll hold and push on shore. So again, that's that kind of early morning shower chance for the beaches. And then the further inland you go, those chances of showers and thunderstorms will start to favor uh, you guys across I-4, I-75 between about, let's say, noon and four o'clock or so. A bit closer look here in Flagler County. We were just tracking a little lone shower, but that has since fizzled out. So that's certainly some good news, but uh, overall just a couple spotty showers for your morning commute. Water vapor imagery showing some of that drier air that I was just mentioning um, a little further to the north. There's that ridge of high pressure. It's all going to kind of sink a little further south. It's not tons of dry air, but it's just enough that rain chances are going to go from about a 50 to 60% down to like a 30 to 40. You can see here in the mid-level moisture map, we're gonna look for that orange. You can see it's starting to creep in and really take over throughout really Wednesday and Thursday. So until then, rain chances will be down to about a 40%. Let me show you. So again, a few coastal showers can't be ruled out. You see a little bit of that green popping up right along the immediate coastline. And then throughout the afternoon, most of that starts to push and trek further west, developing a couple showers and thunderstorms along that sea breeze along I-4, then towards closer into 75 by about 6 o'clock in the evening. And uh, then we're all pretty much done. So dismissal time for the majority of Central Florida should stay dry. Uh, can't can't say everybody will stay bone dry, but certainly uh, the majority of dismissals and after school activities should be good to go. Uh, when we don't have the rain, normally we have the heat. Luckily, though, we do have a strong onshore breeze that tends to keep conditions relatively uh, seasonal for this time of the year. So highs today running only about a degree above normal, only at 93. Rain chances again at about 40 percent. It's going to be feeling like 100 to 105. So yes, of course, it's triple digit heat. It usually is triple digit heat during the summer, but it's nothing um, too concerning, not, nothing too dangerous out there. A quick check on the tropics. National Hurricane Center is highlighting a tropical wave in the Atlantic that has a 20 percent chance of potential development within the next five to seven days or so. Um, nothing extremely concerning with the latest model runs, but it is something we, of course, will keep an eye on. Right now, it shows by like Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, approaching the northern Leeward Islands, uh, closing in on the southern Bahamas, potentially, whatever that may be. Uh, again, that's very far out, still uh, plenty of time worth to watch it. As of now, though, a lot of our models really not making this into a big time system at least as of the latest model runs. In the meantime, though, rain chances for the next few days set about a 40% throughout at least Thursday, and then we'll slowly start to bump up those rain chances a little further as we head into Labor Day uh, weekend. As of now, the Lake Mary Parade on Saturday around 10 a.m. We should be mainly dry. Temperatures will be into those mid 80s. So it will be warm, but we're not having to really deal with any big uh, rain event on Saturday. And then Labor Day looks very much well like Labor Day. Rain chance is 60%, but you can see highs at least are not going to be fluctuating like crazy. We're not going to get those upper 90s where it's feeling like 110, 115. So none of that in the forecast. Just, you know, the very typical summer spread is what we're going to be uh, 
offering today. All right, Candace, this is uh, looking pretty good. A little bit drier. Yeah. I'll take it. Yeah, right? I mean, it, it's nice. I mean, so at the end of the day, it's still a hot afternoon. I, I always say still plan some options indoors. Find some ways of staying cool because that's, you know, that's summer after all. It you can is. only be in the pool for so long, right? So you be in the pool, you sweat a little bit, you go inside, you do Disney on ice, right? That's yes. another option that you can yes. do. So, so just making sure you plan it out. It's it's summer after all here in Central yeah. Florida. It is. It's still, it's still a bit sweltering, I will say. So. Yes, all right. yes. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Candice. You're welcome. Okay, so we do want to check in on that traffic, and we have our Crystal Moyer standing by in for Trooper Steve this morning. And Crystal, what's going on this morning? Hey, hey there. Hey, good morning, Bridget. Good morning. How's, how's it going? I feel like it's I just going. Saw you. I know. <laughs> It's like magic. Well, we just keep going. It is like magic. I love it. I love it. Um, let's go ahead and go on to traffic, though, because we do have a few traffic alerts to talk about. Okay. There's been quite a few hit and run crashes involving injuries today. And hit and run just means that there was a wreck and whoever was involved, the other vehicle drove off, whether they knew about it and did it intentionally or didn't. So the first one we want to talk about is in Osceola County, and this is in the St. Cloud area, wreck with injuries, hit and run crash along Nova Road, just north of US 192. Well, I don't see any information about roadblocks in the area. You can see there's some minor delays heading westbound along US 192 in the area right before you turn on to Nova Road. So I just want to make everybody aware to allow some extra time if you're traveling through the area and watch out for any rescue crews or law enforcement officials who might be there working that hit and run crash. Now there's another wreck and this one is in Orange County, a hit and run crash along OBT near Holden Avenue. It looks like it has just been cleared. Uh, this one didn't block any lanes, but it was also a hit and run crash. No injuries involved there, but you may pump your brakes just a little bit uh, as you're passing that scene. Let's head on over to the DOT cameras. If you are in Marion County, maybe traveling along I-75, here's what it looks like. State Road 40, looking pretty clear near the Ocala exit. Plenty of space to move around there. Earlier this morning, there was a car fire along I-75 uh, just south of State Road 200. That has been cleared. Didn't cause any major disruptions in traffic, but obviously pretty scary thing out there. Here are your drive times if you're trying to head out to Ocala. Uh, if you're trying to travel northbound on the turnpike from I-4 to I-75, allow about 39 minutes. Once you get on to I-75 between the turnpike and State Road 40, the Ocala exit, allow 19 minutes, which is a green light ride which is pretty good. If you are in Orange County, maybe trying to travel along I-4, here are your drive times. It's looking pretty crowded along I-4 heading westbound between Sanford and State Road 50. If you're trying to head downtown from the Sanford area, about 30 minutes, 22 minutes heading eastbound between Osceola Parkway and State Road 50. So let's take a live look outside I-4 in Anderson. You're looking pretty good near the metro area. Uh, we are seeing those normal delays over near um, uh, Kissimmee along I-4 and then as you're traveling up towards the southern end of Orange County. So no major delays to report, but you know those normal stop and go areas as you're heading out the door this morning. Here's another crash that we've been following. This one is in the Brevard County area along I-95 southbound. This is near the Palm Bay Road exit in Palm Bay. Uh, this one is off to the side, so it's not blocking any lanes, not causing any issues. It is a green light ride along I-95, Bridget. All right. Anything else we should touch on before we go, Crystal? Girl, we've been talking about those perchlorates. Uh, Consumer Reports, they did mm -hmm. test 73 food items. And if you don't know what perchlorates are, it's basically a chemical that's used uh, for missiles, for rockets, um, explosives. It's something that you wouldn't expect to be in your food, right? Well, right. it turns out there are traces of it in food. And... Um, you know, it's concerning if you eat a lot of these particular foods because it could affect your health as you get older. Consumer right. Reports, they did an investigation. They tested more than 73 food products and found that there were traces of perchlorates, mostly in baby and kids foods, fruits and vegetables, and some foods, you know, that are stored in plastic wrapping. So, you know, they're making a call out to parents just to be aware. They don't want anybody to panic about this, but uh, my Consumer Reports aired this morning. You can check it out on clickorlando.com. It's also we have it coming up too. at four o'clock. We have awesome. it coming up in, yeah, a little bit later in this. If we get, if we have time left, we're going to definitely show that too right here. 
Yeah, so. it's so interesting because we always mm-hmm. see like PFAS and things that we eat. And, and while there are safe levels, you know, Consumer Reports is looking into what are the feds doing to make sure mm-hmm. that, uh, right. you know, we're keeping these chemicals out of the foods that we eat. Yeah, there's got to be a better way. I get really fired up when we start talking about what's in our food and what's in our products and comparison to other parts of the world. It's like very scary the deeper you dive down that rabbit hole. So thanks, Crystal. We'll we'll play the whole story here coming up shortly. Awesome. Thanks. Bye, Bridget. Thank you. Bye. All righty. So the Lake Mary All-Stars, they are world champions after winning that Little League World Series, and they are back home. They had a big hero's welcome yesterday, and Ezzy Castro has a wrap on all the, the fanfare and celebrations as the kids get ready to go back to school. Coming home as champs, we were there as firefighters showered the Lake Mary All-Stars as they touched down at Orlando International Airport. How does it feel to be home? It feels good. From the airport, we followed the boys to the sports complex. That's where the crowd waited and welcomed back their team with banners and smiles. As soon as you got on that bus, what was the first thing that came to your mind when you saw all of these familiar faces ready to cheer you on? I was kind of overwhelmed. I was kind of, I was, I was actually a little scared. A little scared, a good, in a good way, yeah, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Our Catherine Silver also spoke to head coach Jonathan Anderson, who couldn't believe just how many showed up to show their support. All these kids I love, and to see all these faces come out and support these boys and support the journey, it. it it feels it feels amazing. It, it's it's wonderful. Is so you know the parade is coming up on Saturday, and we'll have that for you here 9:30 a.m. on Saturday for the Lake Mary All Stars Celebration Parade. So make sure you tune into that right here on New Six Plus WKMG and ClickOrlando.com on Saturday at 9:30 until 11. So the Polaris Dawn launch was scrubbed. It was supposed to happen sometime this morning. Should have happened by now, but um, things were delayed. And there is apparently a leak with the Falcon 9 rocket that was discovered. So um, they have called it off at least until tomorrow. Uh, The crew remains on standby and ready to go. But they're going to try to work on what's going on with this uh, helium leak, see if they can figure that out. And they're still targeting a window the same time tomorrow morning starting at 3.38 a.m. So, of course, we'll have it for you if it happens tomorrow morning. We'll be right here with you to bring you that Polaris Dawn launch. So that is Wednesday morning now. It's been rescheduled. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with one of the stars of Disney on Ice that's in town this weekend. Welcome back. Disney on Ice is in town this weekend at the Kia Center with shows Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And if you've never been, it's certainly spectacular with all your favorite Disney characters and songs all on ice, skating there for you. And uh, it's a show for kids of all ages. And this morning we have one of its stars, Kimberly Huckabee, skating in Disney on Ice this weekend with us. Good morning, Kimberly. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. It's so exciting to have you with us. And um, these shows bring out big crowds. So, I mean, are there are there many tickets still available? You can find all of our ticket information at DisneyOnIce.com. You can go to the shows and find our show, Disney on Ice Presents Let's Dance. And right there, you will be able to find all the ticket information. Okay, and so what is the theme this year? Because I know when Disney on Ice comes in town, there's always something different. But it's a lot of our favorites, too. Yes, yeah, so this show is Disney on Ice Presents Let's Dance, and it is about DJ Mickey Mouse mixing up your favorite Disney songs, and he's with his pals Minnie, Goofy, and Donald, and they take some of the most well-known Disney stories, and they remix the music, and we tell five amazing stories from Moana to Frozen 2. We <laughs> have, yeah, we have those two amazing stories. We also have the new movie, Wish. And we have The Little Mermaid and much more. And so you're out there on stage and we'll see you in a variety of uh, scenes and and numbers. Can you tell us about when we might spot you out there? Yeah, so I am an ensemble skater, which means I get to do a lot of the fun big group numbers. And you'll be able to find me wayfinding with the Voyagers in our Moana story. You could also find me in Arendelle hanging out with your favorite sisters, Anna and Elsa. And then you also get to find me chilling under the sea with your favorite crustacean, Sebastian. 
<laughs> what do you love best about doing these shows, Kimberly? I love being able to have my passion be my job. And I love when I am performing and skating. I love seeing the faces of the children and just knowing that I am making magical memories for those children and their families. Yes. And so in your background as a skater, many of the skaters so talented, you've won many awards and uh, skating's in your family. Tell us about your background and, and your history with your love of skating. Yeah, so I started skating at four years old. My mom was a competitive figure skater up in Canada. And so <coughs> I started skating because she was a skater and I loved it so much. And then I have skated competitively for 15 years and I would do local competitions. I did a few national competitions and I was a single skater. And then I also did things like a local show at my rink called Showtime on Ice, where we would, it's like a mini version of Disney on Ice and it was mm -hmm. so much fun. And that is where I found my love for show skating and where I decided, you know what? I think I want to try and make this my job. And that's how I was able to get into the show world. That's amazing. And so what would you say to our young ice skaters who may be out there watching or coming to the shows this weekend? Yeah, I would say, you know, this show is an amazing show. Disney on Ice presents Let's Dance has so many different aspects when it comes to skating. We have some adagio pair skating with some really cool big lifts and spins and beautiful partner skating. We also have amazing single skating like Moana and Elsa. And we also have great um, ensemble numbers like um, the Wayfinders and like the Citizens where you can see skating together as a big group because skating is usually an individual sport. So on this show, you're able to see all different aspects of skating. And so for all the young skaters out there, they get to see how different this type of show skating is compared to competitive skating and how much fun you can have doing this type of job and have your passion be your job. And, and this is something that, that they may be out there one day helping other families and kids have a great time at these shows. It's, it's something that they could be there one day right there on that ice in just a few more years, right? Yes, definitely. So many of the skaters here, when they talk about how they heard about Disney on Ice or what made them want to join Disney on Ice is they saw the show come into their hometown and they were saying, oh my gosh, I love the Pinocchio segment. When it came to my home in Brazil, I watched this one skater who was portraying the role of Pinocchio and his Russian split jump was just amazing and his jumps were so cool and it inspired me to want to become uh, a skater and to want to become a Disney on Ice skater. And what's so cool about that skater is he made his dream come true and he got on that same show and then he got to share the ice with that same skater as when he watched when he was like four years old and that's what inspired him to skate. And so being able to have the opportunity to grow up after watching a Disney on Ice show and being able to join some of your favorite skaters that you might've seen when you were very little is such a rewarding experience. Mm. Yes, there's nothing like it. Well, we appreciate your time this morning. I'll let you rest up and hope you enjoy your time here in Orlando as Disney on Ice Let's Dance gets ready for those shows on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Thanks so much for joining us, Kimberly. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Thank you, you too. So you have to check that out, see which tickets are still available because these are very, very popular shows. But again, that's uh, Disney on Ice presents Less Dance this weekend at the Kia Center on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So before we get out of here, we want to tell you about uh, Volusia County starting up uh, a law enforcement program. It's an intervention program aimed to keep children and adults safe. And News 6's Molly Reed has more on a digital safety band that will hopefully get results 
This share wear band is a relatively small bracelet, but it holds a lot of information just with the tap of your phone, kind of like a QR code. The company donated dozens of these to law enforcement around Volusia County, including New Smyrna Beach here. All the links are live. You customize the profile with as much information or as little as you want. Amanda Anderson, a former nurse, started working with QR codes as a side business when the idea for share wear band came up. Last August, my father-in-law fell ill. So my mother-in-law approached me and she said, hey, you're doing all this work with these QR codes. Can we do something like a medical bracelet where he can put a list of his you know, comorbidities? It took about seven months in the background and then we launched to the public at the end of April. Giving a voice and more security to many who may need help, like someone prone to medical episodes or nonverbal. You know, children with autism and, and non-speaking um, you know, autism, uh, your elderly patients with various types of dementia in the event that they wander and are unable to communicate. Now the law enforcement officers can hand them out to residents when they respond to calls. Otherwise, it'll run you about 20 to 30 bucks depending on the size you need. Now, you don't even need to open your phone's camera app to use it. You just have to hold your phone up right to the bracelet and all the information will pop up. All contact and any medical information you feel first responders or others should know if they get lost or in an emergency. We get calls because you know they've walked away and we need to go try to locate them, which we're happy to do. This gives us an additional tool by wearing this shareware bracelet for our officers to actually get the information that we need to find out how to get them the help they need. We are launching our phase two uh, in approximately three weeks. That'll add an optional upgrade. Uh, it's a geolocation feature. So in the event that you want somebody to wear the band, but you also want to know where they are or where the band's been scanned. In New Smyrna Beach, Volusia County, I'm Molly Reed getting results, New Six. That is a great option, and I can just imagine we'll be telling stories about lives that were saved and, you know, things taken, uh, taken a turn much more quickly in terms of finding people before something bad happens. So that's a great story to hear about. Um, right now, we want to get back to that story that Crystal mentioned. There, there's an ingredient that's in many foods, surprisingly, and in food packaging that is also used with rocket fuel, believe it or not. And this was very shocking, um, but it, this is a new investigation that revealed that these are harsh chemicals commonly used in rockets and explosives, but unfortunately on our dinner tables, and what can we do about it? So new six anchor and insider guy Crystal Moyer explains this Consumer Reports update about the potentially dangerous health toll that this could be taking on you and your family. It's hardly a household name, but perchlorate is a chemical that helps rockets reach for the stars and alarmingly also our dinner plate. Perchlorates can enter our food and water via water that's used to irrigate the crops. It can also be contained in the plastic containers that we use to store our food. How serious is the problem? Consumer Reports recent tests found perchlorate in two thirds of food samples with the highest levels in baby and kids food fast food and fresh produce such as boxed mac and cheese and baby rice cereal and even in some seemingly healthier options like cucumbers and baby carrots. While no single serving exceeded safety limits, multiple servings throughout the day could add up to concerning levels, especially for kids. We're concerned because perchlorate can disrupt thyroid function, potentially affecting metabolism in adults and brain development in children. Consumer Reports reached out to several food companies, including major baby food manufacturers, about these findings. None have provided comments so far on whether they're aware of and taking steps to minimize it in their products. And if you're wondering if scientists only just discovered that perchlorate is a problem in water and food, think again. Unfortunately, while our federal regulators have known about this problem for decades, they have been slow to act. The EPA is now under court order to propose limits on perchlorate in drinking water by November 2025. All right, so we'll keep you updated on that one. Definitely concerning. And consumer experts say that getting adequate amounts of iodine can actually offset this com slash insider. Now, when you get there, if you're not an insider, it is free to sign up and you get access to those stories like this exclusive consumer reports content, as well as access to enter the win those giveaways and contests that we often are doing under our insider program. So check it out. It's free to sign up. We want to remind you that we're headed to Melbourne 
WKMG is hitting the road on September 18th. And we're going to be at Squid Lips doing our afternoon newscast there. We also want to hear from you about stories that we should cover in the Melbourne area. So whether it's a, a person, a place, a thing, an issue, something that we need to help get results on or make other people aware of, unsung heroes, we want to hear it all. Go to clickorlando.com slash hits the road and let us know about those great stories in the Melbourne community. And we'll see you there live on September 18th at Squid Lips Restaurant. That's going to do it for us here on Breakfast with Bridget. We'll see you back here at noon and tomorrow at 730. Take care.